To find out more about how climate change might be affecting Australia, I headed east, away from the mainland. As the world warms, out here is one of our early warning systems. We're aiming for a tiny patch of land called Heron Island. It's home to one of the preeminent marine research centers in the world. It's slap bang next to Capricorn. And it's also at the southern end of perhaps Australia's greatest natural attraction, the Great Barrier Reef. This is a tropical paradise. The waters teem with a multitude of colorful fish and exotic sea life. And this tiny dot of an island, less than a mile long, is home to up to 100,000 birds. But just what does the future hold for this stunning ecosystem? Heron Island Research Station. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you Dr Ward? Hi, I'm Selena. Hello, Hi. Selena. Simon Reeve. Hello, Hi. nice to meet you. you Hello. Too. What hellish conditions that you live and work in? Traveling hard, isn't it? <laughs> How do you cope? Just Can about. Just? just about. Marine biologist Dr Selena Ward is part of a team researching the impact of climate change on coral. She took me out for a walk on the reef flats. This is a sea cucumber, beautiful things. So soft. Isn't it? <laughs> and now, what exactly is it? It's a sea cucumber. Sorry. Whoop, it's, it um, it's, see, it's spitting out that sticky tentacle. We don't really want it. <laughs> Cause right. So it shoots out super so, glue as a yes, form of defense. Yes, because they can't es escape at high speed. <laughs> No. Another trick they have is that if something is to, about to try and eat it, it can spit out its entire digestive system and leave it behind in the hope that the predator will just eat that bit and be satisfied and let it get away. And sometimes How does something evolved to do that. Who right. knows? Selena, we know that coral is very susceptible to changes in climate and its environment. How do the changes manifest themselves? Is there something we can see? The main change, if you have um, warmer than usual water temperature is that the corals will what we call bleach. So if we look at this piece, see this branch is really pale through, or well, these branches are really pale. Mm. If we turn it over, this is the colour we'd expect it to be. Mm. I've heard coral described as the canary in the coal mine. It offers us a warning. Yes, in 1998 we lost 16% of the world's corals in one bleaching event. 16%? Yes. You have no doubt that this is down to temperature change? I have no doubt at all. No, I'm convinced of that. I can't think of any coral scientists who, who wouldn't make that statement, not a single one. If we want coral reefs for future generations, we have to act quickly. We have to reduce emissions globally and we have to reduce them a great deal. We're seeing big bleaching events with so far a very small increase in temperature. I don't think that we can say, well, we'll aim for three degree increase this century, or even a two degree increase this century. If we do have that as our aim, we're aiming to lose these environments. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is predicting catastrophic mortality for the Great Barrier Reef before the end of this century, unless climate change can be slowed. I crossed this vast continent, expecting to find insular communities isolated from the rest of the world. But the issues I've seen here don't speak of isolation. Their resonance is global. I've really enjoyed travelling across Australia. It's an amazing country and the people to a person have been welcoming and generous with their time. I can only hope we have as much excitement on the next leg of our trip as we head east to South America.